Hi, my name's Isaac, and this is a 2022 GMC Sierra Elevation. And today, I'm going to review it for you guys. Now, the Elevation trim has always hovered around $50,000, and personally, I've never really been able to justify it with the features that were included on the previous model years of this truck. But this 2022 has updated so much in the truck that I finally think that it's actually worth $50,000. Excuse if I could jump in real quick. Actually, it's uh it's it's 60,000 now for the base MSRP of this truck. Uh okay. Well, let's see what's included on this truck for 60,000. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Star Buick GMC for allowing me to borrow this truck to review. For all your Buick or GMC needs, I'll leave a link to Star's website in the description below. All joking aside, I think this new Sierra does a good deal to justify its price increase, what with the new technology it features and the exterior design change. But if those things are enough to justify the price increase is your decision as the consumer. I'm just here to show you all the cool things that this has. Starting with the front end, the 2022 model year for the GMC Sierra is a mid-cycle refresh. That means it's gonna have a new front fascia here, new headlights, grille, and a bumper design that is a little bit sleeker, but personally, I think it's a softer look than the more jagged edges of the 2019 to 2021 model year. I think it actually looks really good. It didn't need to go sharper and, and more aggressive and more aggressive. Listen, there's a point that you hit so aggressive, everybody's like, oh my goodness, that's way too aggressive up there. So I personally like the slopier, uh, more soft lines on this front end. I think the truck still looks really good. You're gonna have full LED headlights right here with LED daytime running lights. And it occurs to me that this running light with the camera's refresh rate is doing this really cool swooping animation on the camera. It's not actually doing that in real life. It's just a solid light bar, but the way that the camera's refresh rate works, it looks like it's kind of swooping uh, up and continuous. So there'll probably be a couple comments like, oh my goodness, those headlights are so neat. How do they do that? Unfortunately, they don't actually, you can't see that with the naked eye. Uh, you'll have LED fog lights down here and some really cleverly integrated air vents on the sides of the bumper. Then you'll have two big tow hooks down here and another air vent incorporated into the lower portion. Moving underneath the hood. This is powered by a, I'll never do that again, I promise. I, as long as I do car reviews, I, I promise I won't do whatever that just was. This is powered by a three liter Duramax diesel inline six, which is surprising for a uh, half ton truck. Normally these aren't equipped with diesels, but General Motors is kind of slowly uh, integrating them into their lineup and so is Ram. So that's really cool to see. Uh, this makes 277 horsepower and 460 pound feet of torque. And that's powered by a or it's matched to, sorry, I'm still thinking about whatever I did in the beginning there, <laughs> as paired to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, carrying on to the profile of the truck, I want to start here with the side of the headlight because it actually says Sierra right here incorporated into that. I noticed that little detail. I think that's really cool. And if we move down here to the wheels and tires, you'll have 275 60R tires wrapped around these nice, 20 inch wheels. I like that GMC is still red in the center of the blacked out wheels. And it's not just silver or also black. I think that contrasts really well, especially with this really nice blue color. Elevation badge right there, pretty standard. And then you'll have a Duramax turbo diesel badge that also says GMC. A lot of badges on this truck. We're not done with those stinking badges. Moving up here, you'll have a black plastic mirror cap. Nothing too crazy on here. They are power adjustable, but there's no heating element or anything else in them. Pretty basic. You do get body color door handles though, and it does have keyless entry. And then, aha, we have our X31 off-road badge back here. I told you we weren't done with the badges. And then it also says Sierra in the tail light right here. Great things about General Motors trucks. A, 
this step incorporated into the bumper. Makes it super easy to just grab something if you need it. As we continue back here, we have just like a trillion more badges. Another Elevation badge, Sierra badge, GMC badge, and then the Star Buick GMC. That's a sticker. It's not a badge, but you know, we'll include it, you know, because we don't want to leave them out. And then you'll have dual exhaust back here and your tow hitch. If properly equipped, the numbers were a little hard to find. I believe this can tow up to 9,300 pounds. Now let's talk multi-pro tailgate. A lot has been made about this. A lot of videos have talked about this, but this could be your first GMC Sierra video uh, because maybe you're just looking at the truck now. So I still want to highlight all the functionality of the multi-pro tailgate. The first thing I want to highlight, you do get a backup camera and a puddle light right here. So when you drop the tailgate at night, uh, you can just kind of see what's below you. That's always an ice. That's on a lot of the competition, but you hit the bottom button right here because there's two buttons, no latch. Pretty standard tailgate comes down normally. Now this part does fold up to give you a bed extender. Very nice, love to see that. If we put it back up, we can also hit this upper button. That'll come down to give us a workbench area. Very, very clever. And we can still lift this up if we want to, and that will give us another bed extension of sorts. Higher trims of this truck have an available kicker speaker system that is integrated right here. That's really neat as well, so that's an option. And then if we put this up, hopefully this will work in one shot. If you hit both buttons at the same time, it did, nice. The entire bed will fold down and that will give you a step up into the bed. And then there's also a bar right here. So you can step up much easier, grab the bar, that'll lock in place and you can waltz up into your bed. So, I don't know why I'm so sing-songy in this video. While we're in the bed here, might as well talk about the LED bed lights that are incorporated and a household power outlet. And there is quite a hefty amount of tie downs in here. Before we move to the interior, let's talk key fob. Lock, unlock, you have remote start, you'll have panic, then you also have the ability to drop the tailgate from the key. Starting here in the interior, before we talk about all the features, I want to mention the gauge cluster startup screen. Now, a lot of vehicles have gauge cluster startup screens, but I think General Motors here on this Sierra might have the coolest one. So when you open the door, it's going to say GMC on the truck. And then what it's going to do is it's going to blow this line out into the main screen and it's going to start forming GMC across both screens and go right into that one. I think that is such a cool animation and it really gets you excited to drive your truck. This is where I really think it begins to justify its price tag. I mean, the interior material quality in here is fantastic. This isn't even a Denali, and I think you're really gonna be impressed with some of the features that this includes. Starting here on the door panel, you'll have soft touch up here where you'd rest your arm. Then you'll have this nice wood grain trim with chrome that goes along the door handle. That's a really sleek looking design. And then you'll have lock, unlock, your window switches down there, as well as your mirror buttons and your window lockout. And then right here, you'll have your electronic parking brake, your four wheel drive modes, as well as your towing mode and your lighting controls. These two buttons uh, brighten and dim your center screen right there. And then you have your bed light. Up here, you have this really nice gloss black piano trim. And then up here on the dash, you have some stitching and leather that extends all the way across with a nice cubby behind the screen for sunglasses or whatever you wanna throw back there. But let's move into the gauge cluster screen first. So this is an entirely digital gauge cluster. So everything in this screen is going to be uh, a screen. You know, there's no actual physical gauges anymore, which might be a turnoff for some people, but I think it's a really neat feature. And that allows you to basically lay out anything how you want. And I really like that. So you have your digital speedometer, you have your music, navigation, uh, phone settings, stuff like that. And then you can also see your engine temperature, your, uh, your gas right there digitally laid out how much gas you have left and it's going to tell you what drive mode you're in on the little screen right there if i give it the gas you can see you'll get this cool little red line that goes up with 
the uh, speedometer. Pretty cool, and that is controlled from here and here on the steering wheel. Uh, you'll have your Bluetooth settings, your cruise control, stuff like that. And then you'll have your traditional wiper stock, pretty basic generic plastic. There is some cheap plastics in here, but I think overall it is a pretty premium feeling interior. So you'll have a leather wrapped steering wheel with nice accent stitching. And I've always liked the GMC layout. I think it's very rugged and tough. I think this interior as a whole is much, much better than the outgoing model. I did not like the small screen that kind of spilled down into the larger buttons. I think that this design looks a lot truckier. You will have a traditional column shifter. I really like the column shifters. Fortunately, it's not wrapped in leather or anything, but I do think it's cool to have that. And that's because you don't have a center uh, stack area right here, or you do have a center stack. This is the center stack. You don't have a center tunnel, I should say. You do have an armrest and stuff because this folds up into a seat, which is really nice. And you have some storage in there as well. Cup holders. But let's get to the main event, this giant screen. And I absolutely have to commend General Motors for this because they've basically, in my opinion, perfected this because I have always said I think they are the best in backup camera quality at least at the moment if we throw this into reverse here you can see really really crisp screen you'll have guiding lines that turn with the wheel and then what you could do is you can also do this for trailering there is a 360 cam available this one just has the backup camera but it is by far I think one of the cleanest most crisp cameras in the industry and now it's on a larger screen it's on a larger layout um, so that's that's a win and then also I think they have the fastest infotainment system from most of the vehicles that I've reviewed like no lag at all just really quick you click something boom it goes right into it and uh, you know there's very very little delay this one is also includes uh, Google now, kind of built into it, so you'll have Google Maps, Google Assistant. Of course, you can do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you'd like. If we move down here, you do have an actual physical volume knob, which I like, they've kept that, and a home button just to return you home if you're kind of lost in the menus. Down here, you'll have your lane keeping assist button, your auto engine start stop, the button to drop your tailgate from inside here, your hazards, your traction control off, and your hill descent control. Then you'll have another really nice kind of wood grain trim uh, piece that heads down the entirety of the dash, again, lending to a very high quality feel. And then if we move down here to the climate controls, I've always liked this in General Motors. When you turn the dial, you actually have a physical readout on the climate controls. So you actually have the numbers right there of what temperature you're at, which I think is really nice. Dual zone, of course, they're locked and sync right now. You can turn that off and individually adjust them if you would want. Moving to the rear seats here on the Elevation, tons of storage options, really like this. So first off, you can open these up and there's a little cubby section in here. That's on both sides for storage. And then you can fold this down for your traditional little armrest with cup holders and your spot for your Fiji water if you need it. And then I really like this. You can just lift up the seats. No need to pull any latches or levers. Just lift them right up for some storage under here and a more flat load floor. And then when you're done, you can just grab it and put them right back down. Some of the competitors have you pull a latch or, or you have to do multiple tasks to lift the seats up, not here in the General Motors trucks. Down here, you'll have a household power outlet, USB and USB-C, as well as climate vents. You have the nice wood trim that extends back here, and the armrests are actually just as comfortable back here. They could have made this hard touch, but they didn't, and I really appreciate that attention to detail. As for legroom, this is a little further back than I would normally have it, but I still have about four or five inches. I am 5'9", so that gives you kind of a little bit of perspective. And then I have headroom four days. So this is very comfortable back here. You could definitely fit a lot of tall people for a long amount of time and they'd all remain comfortable. That pretty much wraps up the back here. Let's take this thing for a quick spin. All right, now that we've taken it for a spin, let's take it for a drive. The inline six in this is actually more impressive than I thought it would be. I thought it would have a little bit more lag on the acceleration, but when I floor it, 
man, we fly, and you can hear that. It doesn't sound too bad either. Definitely sounds better than General Motors four-cylinder, and obviously it doesn't sound as good as the V8s do, but it's actually pretty impressive. And it just gets up and goes. And with that 9,300 pound towing rating, I imagine this would probably tow pretty smoothly as well. I've always liked how it drove. I, 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 any engine configuration I've driven in this truck, and I don't think I've done this uh, in line six as of yet, has been great. And I'm like, ah, it's just, it's really held back in the department of technology, I think, which is funny because they're like so up on tech, but I'm like, it just the previous outgoing model left a lot to be desired and I think it's been made up wholeheartedly with everything in here. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap up my review of this 2022 GMC Sierra Elevation. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Before I go, I'd like to close with a Bible verse. I really believe that God has blessed me with this channel and I'd like to give back to him for the success that I've had here by hopefully encouraging you guys and pointing you towards Christ if you don't know him. Today, I'd like to read Proverbs 21, 6. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a snare of death. It's really easy to lie, isn't it? When we're in those, those tough situations with a spouse or a friend or a business partner and you know maybe you messed up or, or you just want them to like you and so you say whatever you think is gonna make them happy. Whatever's gonna get them off your back. Whatever's gonna make them go away. Because it's easy. But as it says here, it's a fleeting vapor and a snare of death. Especially, this verse is specifically talking about kind of lying your way up um, the financial ladder. It says getting of treasures. And I'll be honest, it's really hard not to lie in this industry because I make income off of this. And so you're constantly going, okay, well, I wanna make sure that I, I still have all my deals with the brands, that I'm still getting cars to review. And so sometimes you can lie by omission, especially with these car reviews. You can say, ooh, that's a bad feature, or that doesn't really work right, and, and not mention it. And I've done that in the past, and I've felt convicted of it because we're talking $60,000 cars, you know, and you guys are watching this to know if you should purchase it or not. And you're the guys that I do these videos for, not the dealerships and the brands. And I wanna make sure that I'm completely honest in my videos because my channel is growing. I've made some really cool connections in the car industry and I've kind of moved my way up the ladder, if you will, but I wanna make sure that that's done honestly and truthfully. I would rather be a man with no material wealth or possessions, but that is known for his integrity than someone who has lied their way all the way up to the top and has all the wealth in the world. Because my success would be based on dishonesty. And I don't want that. And I'm pretty sure deep down none of us do. But we yearn for that success and sometimes we get carried away with what we'll do to get it. So next time you're thinking about lying about something, maybe you're sitting on the couch and your spouse comes in and goes, uh, you know, did you take the dog for a walk? And you're thinking, well, I could say yes to get them off my back. Just be honest, because honesty will go a lot further than lying will. I can promise you that. All right, guys, I'll see you next time.